hello students in this today's lecture we can see the next type of gametogenesis which is known as the oogenesis in the previous lecture we can start with the process of gametogenesis and in that we can also see the gametogenesis process it is divided into two types that is the spermatogenesis and the oogenesis in the last lecture we can also start with the process of uh spermatogenesis we can uh, uh, see detail in details what is mean by the spermatogenesis but in this today's lecture we can start with the process of oogenesis so dear students we all know that what is oogenesis oogenesis it is nothing but the process of formation of female gamete it means the differentiation of female primordial germ cells into mature ova we all know that in the either it is in a spermatogenesis or the oogenesis from the primordial germ cell there is the formation of that respective gamete so the formation of or the differentiation of primordial germ cells into a oogonium is known as or the for the formation of mature ovum is known as the oogenesis no doubt this process can be occur or take place in a female sex organ that is the Ovary. As just like in a spermatogenesis, the oogenesis process is also having three phases. That is the uh, period of multiplication, period of growth, and the period of maturation. The period of multiplication is same in a spermatogenesis and in the oogenesis, which involves um, in uh, when we see in the process of oogenesis. it involves the formation of primordial germ cells or conversion of primordial germ cells into the oogonia by mitotic cell division so there is a formation of diploid oogonia so this phase is a similar in the spermatogenesis there is a formation of spermatogonia which is a diploid in number and in case of oogonia or oogenesis there is a formation of oogonia what is the difference between the spermatogenesis and oogenesis now the remaining two phases that is the phase of growth and the phase of multiplication it is different than that of the spermatogenesis so the unique feature of oogenesis it is a prolonged period of growth which is never occur in the spermatogenesis but in the oogenesis that growth phase it is a very unique one because many important events can be or changes can be occur during this period so we can see what happen here so in this growth phase the oocytes start to increase in the size as the name itself indicate growth growth means the enlargement increase in that uh, particularly shape or size so why it is increase because in this phase the nucleus and the other material uh, it start to synthesize and then these substances accumulate start to accumulate in the cytoplasm and that's why uh, as the new material or the new um so material is synthesized in that um, cytoplasm and accumulated in that cytoplasm the size is increases if you see how the size is increases there are some examples i have shown you that that in frog the young oocytes means before the growth phase they are 50 micron in diameter but once they complete the growth phase it becomes 20 to 40 times larger it means such a large um increase in the size can be occur during this phase in hen eggs also there is a increase is a more uh, more than 200 times larger uh, can be found in, um, between the primary and after the completion of this growth phase in the mouse is also it, if you see so it is a 43 times larger than the previous so actually what happened in this period of growth so in this period of growth the two important phases can be occur which is known as the previtelogenesis which is uh, known as the phase where the yolk cannot be synthesized okay so this is the phase which can be occur before the yolk synthesis that phase is indicated as a pre vitelogenesis where only cytoplasmic and nuclear material start to grow in size not the yolk then uh, where the yolk can be start to synthesize in the second phase which is known as the vitelogenesis so here actually there is the synthesis of yolk can be occur so during this growth phase previtelogenesis and vitelogenesis these two phases can be occur so in previtelogenesis as i already told you that there is a cytoplasmic and nuclear material can be start to increase in size 
where the, there is an mRNA, tRNA, rRNA, nucleus increase in size, mitochondria is also increase in size. So all these material, except yolk, all the material, cytoplasmic and nuclear, start to increase in size. Once this, there is an increase in size of this nuclear and cytoplasmic material, then the vitalogenesis process will start, where there is the formation synthesis of yolk can be formed. So yolk it is a very important material. Yolk it is an nutritive material, and egg or ovum has the responsibility to provide the nutritive material for the next or the uh, future uh, further embryonic developmental stages. Because sperm is very small in size, it is not having that much amount of yolk. So as the egg is only one in size, ovum is only one ovum is produced at a time. So this ovum is large in size. Why it is large in size? Because the whole yolk or cytoplasm is accumulated in this single ovum. And that's why the vitalogenesis process is very important because it is a nourishing material for the future embryonic development. So the liver, it is the main source where the precursor of the yolk is present. Uh, and when it is transported to the ovary via blood, then it become the uh, uh, it is having an active state. It is converted into the active vitalogenesis. So this is a very important phase which is can be occur during the growth of that two sites. So after the growth is completed, so the next phase is started, which is known as the maturation phase. So in the maturation phase, the diploid primary oocyte now undergo the meiotic cell division. So first there is a mitotic cell division. Now the cell is start to undergo meiotic cell division. As we all know that the meiotic cell division there is a reduction in chromosome number. So what happened? There is a formation of one haploid secondary spermatocytes and one polar body is produced. So this one polar body, uh, which is a very small in size, having very less amount of cytoplasm, and one a uh, large size of uh, cell is also produced, which is known as the secondary oocytes. Now, these secondary oocytes are again undergo the meiotic second division, and there is a formation of a one functional ovum. At the same time, the uh, polar bodies also undergo the second meiotic cell division, so there is a formation of two polar bodies. So, in this way, in the process of two genesis, there is a formation of one functional ovum and three polar bodies. Why only one functional ohm is uh, produced? Because if the division is equal, what happens? The cytoplasm is equally divided into that four cell. Then yolk is also divided equally into that four cell. So that much yolk is not sufficient for the further development. That's why in the nature, the, we can see in the spermatogenesis, four equal divisions can be occurred because it is microscopic in structure. But the yolk nutritive material it is found in the ova, so only one ohm is produced, which contains 100% yolk, which is having a capability to nourish further the embryonic stages. And that's why only one ovum is produced. If the four are produced, these four cells can be divided that yolk into the equal proportion, which is not sufficient to nourish the further embryonic development. That's why this is the difference between the oogenesis uh, and the spermatogenesis. So whole process of spermatogenesis is under the hormonal control. So the uh, follicle stimulating hormone promotes the growth and development of the oocytes. LH triggers the ovulation process. And this both the hormone that is the FSH and LH, it promotes the meiotic maturation division of the oocytes and also stimulate the follicle cell to synthesize the vitrogenesis. So we, here we can see what is the uh, process of oogenesis, how it is uh, occur, how one functional ovum is produced. Now, what is the basic difference between this spermatogenesis and oogenesis? We can see in a one uh, loop. So, if you see about a number, so a millions of sperms are produced per day. So when we compare about um, the, this number into the ovum, only one ovum is produced and it is produced after every 28 days, which is generally that 28 days, it is nothing but we can be called it as a menstrual cycle. So here, million sperms are produced, and here, only one ovum is produced, which is after 28 days. 
these four uh, in the spermatogenesis so uh, at the end of the spermatogenesis we can obtain four spermatids of the equal division of the cytoplasm means four that sperms are having equal amount of cytoplasm so there is no any formation of polar body but when we see in the oogenesis there is only one ovum is produced because the division is not equal unequal division is there that's why only one uh, large size ovum is produced and three polar bodies are produced which is very small in size the process of spermatogenesis it is begins at the puberty that is at the sexual maturity but in the oogenesis where if you see the process of oogenesis it is begins during the fetal development so before prenatal period that process can be start so this spermatogenesis process occurs throughout the life of a male but in a female oogenesis process can be occur in a certain age limit so after menopause which is uh, generally a 50 age if you round or uh, you give an average age so at a 50 age of a female the menstrual cycle is stopped which can be called with it as a menopause and at that time there is a production of ovum can be stopped so this process of oogenesis it is not a lifelong the sperms are produced continuously and released during the process of ejaculation while ovum release during the ovulation in the middle of the menstrual cycle no doubt the spermatogenesis occur in the male sex organ that is the testis and oogenesis process occur in the female sex organ which is known as the ovaries both these process are involved in meiotic cell division and here both the gametes are haploid because the gametes are always haploid so that the when these two haploid gametes can be fused together there is a formation of a diploid cycle so here we can see what is mean by the process of um, gametogenesis in that we can see the uh, spermatogenesis and the oogenesis so uh, i think now can uh, you can understand in details the process of this oogenesis it is a very simple process and these both the process are very important because it is the first step in the development of biology because it starts with the formation of gamete so i hope in this lecture you can understand the process of oogenesis thank you